Hi, Brockton residents. This is Maya Sullivan, and welcome to the 16th episode of Our Brockton. And again, the title speaks for itself, Our Brockton. It's our community. It's our home. We're going to continue to uh, work together to make it a, uh, a wonderful home for everybody. So it's an honor and privilege today to have Stephanie Danielson, Brockton resident, uh, who is a chair of the Conservation Commission. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. No, this is good. So really the whole purpose of our show is to just educate and inform. You know, we've talked about COVID in the past. We've talked about business and rental assistance. Today it's about Conservation Commission. Um, people have always heard about CONCOM and, you know, a lot of people don't know exactly what Conservation Commission mm -hmm. does. But before we get into that, uh, I'd love you to have a couple seconds or a couple moments to just share with the, with the, uh, the people watching today. Uh, who is Stephanie Danderson and why are you doing Conservation Commission? Okay, well, I am a 30-year resident of Brockton. Thank you. I was not born here, neither was my husband. We chose to live to Brockton and we moved here at the height of the city's financial woes mm. back in 1989, 81, 89, okay. back in 89. So uh, again, we are very happy that we choose to live here. Um, my husband and I have always spent a lot of time outdoors and in nature. Um, as a young girl, I used to go walking every day in the summertime when we would, um, our weekend activity, I used to call it our church, <laughs> we would take our boys out, we'd go riding, we'd go hiking. So I was always really concerned about protecting our open spaces. and. The Conservation Commission seemed to be a great way to do that. And then I learned more about wetlands and how important they were to a community and how much value they provided, not just in the functions that they have, but also economically. So that really got me interested in learning more about conservation commissions. And then my daughter-in-law, who, when she was dating our son, we would take her out with us every mm -hmm. time we'd go outside. She became really interested and became a wetland scientist. And it was really her that got me interested in being on a conservation commission. That's excellent. That's, that's great. That's great information. Now, just for those watching, um, the boards and commissions in the city of Brockton, a uh, vast majority of volunteers. So Stephanie volunteers her time. I served as a volunteer on the planning board. So again, people are doing this out of the goodness of their heart to better the community. Could you just explain to us First of all, how long have you served on the Conservation Commission? Because it's unbelievable. Well, I was telling the mayor before I came in today <laughs> that um, I have been on the commission except for a sh two short breaks for 21 years. Wow. I started serving in 2000. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And give us a, a, an example of like the composition, how many people are on the Conservation Commission, what are some of the issues that you typically deal with, I know mm -hmm. they vary, but just again, just to educate. So uh, the composition of the board, it's supposed to be a seven member board, and in all the time I've served, we've really only ever had five members. I think maybe very early on we had six to seven members, but it, it's been hard, and I think pe it's because people don't understand what the Conservation Commission does. So I'm glad to talk about it today. Um, right now it is me and two other women and that's unusual because in all the time I've served we've only had two women maybe at a time sitting on the commission. It's usually been all men so it's nice to, to see some broader representation. Now I just appointed a man and a woman, so you're going to have more members that are coming on the board, so that's a wonderful I'm endeavor. I'm very excited <laughs> about that, and thank you so much. Oh yeah, much. no, you're welcome. And my fellow commissioners, thank you. Um, the, the, the two women who have been sitting for a while, um, they're younger, which is nice, bring some f fresh blood, um, new viewpoints, and they have some background in environmental protection. But that doesn't mean that everyone coming on needs to have background in, in environmental protection. What you really need to care about is the city and its natural resources and how they help people, whether you're a business or you're um, just an average person. So you might ask, what are wetlands? Mm -hmm. Well, people will tell me, you know, they, they had to file with the Conservation Commission. I, I don't have wetlands in my backyard. There's, I don't see any water. A wetland is defined as an area where groundwater is at or near the surface of the ground um, during the growing mm -hmm. season. So you don't have to see water. But think about the swamps that you see. Those, it's very obvious. Usually there's water. 
visible water. You might have a wet meadow where you walk out and it feels a little soggy. But it might be an area that feels dry to you, but if you were to start to dig down, you'd, you'd encounter groundwater pretty close to the surface. It's also the area around um, water bodies, like our rivers and streams. Those areas um, are usually wetland areas. They're areas that take the storm water, the rain that falls, and helps recharge those water bodies. They help filter out pollutants. Um, very importantly, especially around water bodies, um, wetlands also include floodplains, which are the areas that when you have a heavy rainstorm um, or storm surge, the water over, t over banks and flows beyond the banks of that water body and are absorbed and taken up by those floodplains. Okay. And in Brockton, that's a lot of people um, who've been in the city for a long time and, and lived here will appreciate um, how important that is. When you think about some of the areas, I believe the, the, it's Belmont, it, it's not Belmont Street, it's Belmont Place, where the city with a FEMA grant actually purchased some properties that flooded regularly. That's right. And those were demolished in that area where they stood now is turned back to flood storage area. So that street doesn't flood, um, it won't flood in a normal flood. So on the back, just, just for those watching, um, it's on the back side of the Ash Street um, playground. It's, it's, it's Belmont Ave coming down um, from West Elm Street um, on the right. Uh, again, it's, it's an open fenced-in lot now with, with greenery, but there used to be, as, as Stephanie said, used to be a, a habitual issue of, of severe flooding. Um, in terms of, you know, if you talk about waterways, so, you know, Flags Pond, Salisbury, DW, what area in the city, in your opinion, you've been doing this for decades now, thank you, what area in the city tends to have more conservation issues? Is there any set area or is it just scattered throughout? Well, it's really interesting because most people will say, what, and, and we will get applicants who kind of think, gee, this is Brockton. It's so developed. Mm -hmm. It's so urbanized. Um, they either don't have wetland air systems or, or they don't care about protecting them. And I think the city cares a lot about mm -hmm. protecting their wetland areas. Um, so you'll find wetlands throughout the city. They're actually very old maps that will show how wet Brockton was. You know, we're at, right at the head of the Taunton River watershed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the areas that comes to mind for flooding um, that continues to flood in serious storm events is the old Kmart Plaza mm. in Shaw's Center there. And, and people, <laughs> um, in 2005, that area flooded and there were cars floating because people thought they could drive through the water, and wow, it was very deep. Was that deep. So that, that's an area. Um, but anywhere there's, down by the Trout River, um, the um, Trafalgar River, mm -hmm. um, certainly along the Salisbury Plain River, you have wetland systems that extend. And then in places where people just wouldn't expect it, wouldn't over expect on Oakland it. Street, yep. there's a, a, a wetland system. You know, uh, Stephanie just brought a good point up. She talked about Kmart Plaza, and if you grew up here in Brockton, you remember that. Um, but for those that were generations before, it was, and I remember, Skyview um, Drive-In. It was a drive-in mm -hmm. theater there. And even before that, there was, uh, that was the Brockton Airport back in the day. So, um, you know, the, the, the changes, um, the physical changes of structures and locations and locuses are there, but the flood, uh, flooding areas, they, they don't change. They don't change. Um, so I guess my question would be is, what, why do you serve for so long? Like, what, what, what drives you to continue to, to do it? And we thank you, and we thank yeah. you very much. But, you know, if, if I was someone watching this and say, wow, she's doing it for t over two decades, why? Like, what, what gets yeah, you doing that, it? That's such a good question. And in part, I mean, you know, I, I have said, I'm, I'm ready to step down. I've done this for a long time. I have other things I want to work on. And I was recently asked, if I would come back um, as the board was changing its composition. And one of the reasons I stay is, especially right now, um, I have, I'm working with some very bright, um, very committed people. But they're new to the commission. They're new to the um, impl implementation of wetlands protection regulations. And I have history. I, I understand how it works. And I really like 
um, helping people understand what they are authorized to mm. do, what's within their jurisdiction, and what's not, and why certain protection is important, and how it works and how it functions. So, you know, I've made a real commitment that as, as you continue to appoint people to the board, I would like to continue to sit, help people really acclimate, um, feel comfortable in participating in the process mm -hmm. as a member, and groom the next chair. Right, right. And I'll tell you, you have institutional knowledge. Uh, there are a few people that have served, uh, former uh, Fire Chief Ken Galligan has served for decades as well mm -hmm. on board. So without, without you know, your drive and determination to really groom the next generation, you know, we really would not be doing what as a city we need to do. Mm -hmm. When you talk about conservation, you're talking about zoning or planning or, or any of those different boards and commissions. So uh, I want to just say thank you. I'm, I'm glad you're still doing it. I also want to thank your husband, Arnie Danielson. <laughs> Everybody knows Arnie as well. He's just really a huge advocate for the arts here uh, and poetry. It just runs the gamut, um, but he's a, 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 just a great, great uh, Brocktonian as well. So. Stephanie, is there anything else that at this, believe it or not, we're running out of time. Are you, uh, do you have anything else that you wanted to share at this, at this well, point? Well, I, th I think what I would like to share, because one of the things that, um, you know, comes back to you sometimes as a commissioner is that you're anti-business. Um, because sometimes you have to say no. But usually no comes in the form of, let's look at the project and do it a little differently. Um, I think in all the time, 20 years mm -hmm. that I've sat on the commission, I can only remember denying two projects. And it, was, it wasn't until after we tried to work with the developer to change um, the project a little bit, just, just alter it a little bit so that you could come into compliance mm. with the regulations and with our, our goals. Um, so it, the commission isn't pro-business, it's not anti-business. They're just there to uphold the regulations and make sure that a project um, provides the best protection of the city's resource areas. Excellent. And that's true. And that's true. So I want to thank you, Stephanie, thank for you. your service, your volunteerism, and for your time today. I really do. Um, so again, this is the 16th episode of our Brockton. Um, it was really informative. I want to thank Chair of the Conservation, Stephanie O'Danielson, for uh, coming on today. Uh, we will be having other uh, chairs of other commissions come on again. The whole purpose is to just uh, help educate uh, as a community. Um, we have a shared vision. Once we get past COVID-19 and the, the really the negative impacts that it's caused to our community from financial to health to emotional, um, we are going to be poised for really wonderful things here. And business development is, is really uh, a catalyst for uh, good things to come here in the City of Champions. So, it is an honor and a privilege to serve as your mayor of the city of Brockton. I want to thank you for, uh, for watching again uh, the 16th episode of Our Brockton. We'll be taping uh, another episode uh, this week, later this week. So again, I want to just uh, re remark that this is um, Women's History Month. Uh, and today, the day that Stephanie and I are filming is International Women's Day. So uh, as a dad uh, and as a husband, uh, I want to just applaud uh, the next generation. Of, uh, of our youth here in the city of Brockton. And the next uh, guest that will be on my show is, is a real example of, of what a dedicated Brocktonian can do. So I'll just leave you at that. I won't tell you who she is, but it's gonna be a great one. So again, thank you for tuning in. Be safe, wear your mask, social distance, and we'll be back again soon. Thank you.